Folks, thanks for coming by. Hey, you'll be happy you did. We have the rest of our teapot collection that couldn't get in the first one. And also a couple of surprises and I'm doing our coffee pots today as well. Right here on my take on Home and Garden. Come on over, get your post toasties or your popcorn and your coffee and let's dive in right now. The first sweet little pot with a brass handle. Look at this, it's about a two cupper, I think. His and hers <laughs> for that intimate tea. Wonderful. Someone asked if I could show how to pour a proper tea, and I'm going to do that too. This is a very different pot for us, and it's in a wonderful stoneware made in Thailand. And it's got the cutest fruit, apples, plums, and so on, found at a yard sale, and not a ton of money. So you collectors out there, you know what you can get away with once in a while. The next little sweet pea, we have an example of a Demitas tea, teapot. This, I happen to have a creamer with it, so I want to show it in its amazing little scale. This is also in the Victorian age, could be a child set. Okay, make no mistake. People with money, the child would have their own little porcelain set and learn how to have a proper tea. All righty, really sweet. And this particular pot and its lavender flowers and gold trim is made in Austria. Love that. Classic pull. A lot of Bavarian and Austrian have that high pull. It's almost a C or G clef sign. You'll see a lot of that. Our good friend Bob <laughs> from Philadelphia. He probably watched the first one and thought we forgot about him. There's no way, Bob, you know we can't do that. We have the coveted, let me, let me move these because they'll be distracting, the coveted Brown Betty. That's a nickname here, but they're made in England out of a particular clay. Okay, this is a wonderful pot. Probably, I'm sure, a four-cupper. Okay, we're going to get a close-up of that bottom stamp for you, too. Now, this is brown, Betty. Like that wasn't good enough, Bob sends little Betty. <laughs> I can't tell you. This would be probably a three-cupper. And you can see that clay, particular clay that they used in a wonderful brown glaze. Where you're gonna go, folks? Did you think that was it? Hmm, we got Brown Betty, Little Betty, and no, nope, not done yet. Let me tell you, there's Big Betty. Too. There's a bigger one than this, at least, that I know of. I think there's five sizes, if I'm not mistaken. We have three because of Bob, and I know there's a bigger one. And this is, <laughs> I gotta tease him, 
Baby Betty. Same maker. <laughs> Baby Brown Betty. How cute can you get, guys? An instant collection from Bob last year. What a guy, huh? And is that sweet or what? That's a two cupper. So if it's just you and your partner, that might be all you need for that late night tea time up on the bed stand. <laughs> we have a couple of examples of real inexpensive teapots and you'll understand why right away. These are thrifted, yard sale or goodwill, made in China, no big deal. They're really kind of sweet. Missing the lid. Classic, right? Even as careful as you are, you wash the thing, you put the lid on and you go to put it away, there goes the lid, like a Frisbee. So, what good are they? Well, a couple of things. They're good for stirring or rooting your plants indoors or on your porch or making a cute arrangement with your silk flowers indoors. And you people that have been with us, you've seen that more than once. So you're gonna get a real buy on these teapots because they're missing their lid. Now we just had somebody tell how they make a lid out of a dollar store jar that comes with a lid they paint it or what have you. That's an idea too. Here's another beauty. This is so sweet. And it's called Antique Reflections. Frankly, I would hope to someday find the lid out at the flea. You know, there's a lot of guys, they look like junk dealers. And I've said this before, but they have a table full of parts and pieces. What good is that when you walk by? except for the guy that can find the missing piece to something. So you see, even that junk table has some value. This $5 pot could be 25 if I find the lid. But again, Angela wanted this for a little pot of violets, and I did come up with them last year, you might recall. Cute as can be. I call it old country blue and white because it's not really white but it's an off-white or a wonderful country bisque color. Look how sweet. You put a little pot of violets or something in there. Even might surprise her with some daisies this year. Right? Could I get a halo for it? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe if I put something with it. Okay. Love those pots. Even though they're missing a lid, you can see the beauty in those. Now, this is a fine example from my oldest son. What a good guy. A couple Christmases ago, he got me this piece of art Teapot in stoneware is by Debbie Schweikert, and it is signed on the bottom. This was from my oldest son that's in the Marine Corps, watching out for his country, like so many of us did. We're very, very proud of him. This is a gorgeous hand-painted, hand-glazed, hand-adapted, and if you really look at how the handle was applied before the first firing, now you know something like this is gonna get about two or three firings at least. And it is the sweetest example. The inside is glazed, so yes, you can use it. Now you're not gonna put it on a fire. You're not gonna put it on the stove, but you're gonna take your tea kettle and fill your serving pot. That's what all these are for. The 
presentation on the table is what's important. All right, just a beauty. Now the only thing that can probably show that up is the next one <laughs> by Mark Roberts. And it is a fine example of a metal-based, certainly brass, metal handle, metal pole with a pineapple or pine cone finial. Look at this beauty. Look at this shape. What a sweet pea. And it is technically with that bottom, it's an eight-footed teapot because it touches in eight places all the way around. That's an all-time favorite. You folks that have been here with us, you've seen it used on a table, and it's just superb. Now that, I think, is the last of the teapots and I'm going to move up all the coffee pots and then something different at the end. Alrighty guys, hard to beat. I know that Mark Roberts, it is superb. And he has a big line of those across the, the years and their designer, they're just called designer pots, and I think they only make so many of each one. Anyway, anybody remember in our last teapot video, I showed the teapot to this set, made in Japan for the Franklin Mint. Here it is on its stand. You can see how much more substantial this is then the teapot. This is the coffee pot to that set. Absolutely exquisite. Art work all the way around. Fine porcelain. We'll take it off its stand so you can see. You know, even the stand is done all the way around. Gold trim, extra fine, beautiful. And the stopper is on the back, that catch, and we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. Let's see, we have the Vienna Woods coffee pot. I told you and showed you that I finally found that creamer. We only had the pot and the sugar. Just gorgeous, hand-painted, gold-trimmed, Beautiful, even though I had it here recently, it does go to this collection. And admittedly, the coffee pot collection is small. Five, six, seven. We have seven coffee pots in our collection. That's it. This little beauty is American. It's the only one right now. And this is by the Pearl China Company. Beautiful, incredible, creamy luster wear with that classic look from the 60s and 70s. <laughs> I can't take this smile away. It is a dandy. It's so cute on its own. That style, it's really coming up on to Regency and possibly that right after that era, right in that pocket, 50s even. So, oh my goodness, check it out. We got one we did show but I think it's worth seeing again. All the big Johnson Brother collections have a teapot and a coffee pot that matches those collections. Now, there's more than we'll ever have, but I'm sure some people got some of them beautiful dinnerware collections. They have every piece. 
This is from The Friendly Village by Jansen Brothers of England. Again, just a quick visit to see that ultra dandy. <laughs> Undeniably good. Tall with the tall spout. Alrighty, now three new pieces for you. All made in Germany and or Bavaria part of Germany, which is the southern part. Okay, this staggering example, it's got the tall undoubtedly again, see this ringed pull that I mentioned before with the German or Bavarian designers undeniable tall spout and we're going to get a name for you here because there's so many to remember Edelstein Bavaria and this is signed in 22 karat gold now what I love about this one if you were to guess who made this or what country it came from to me, this is so English. <laughs> it's so English, don't be fooled. It looks very Austrian, easily could be. And of course, their neighbors right there anyway, but made in Bavaria. And this design is called Chateau Rose. It's fabulous. It's Angela's favorite. <laughs> you can see why. Next, I want to show you something that if I can smile even wider, I probably will. If you folks remember, I won this in an auction and it is RS Prussia. It is that incredible turn of the century style. Very Victorian just into Art Nouveau, incredible. Look at the daintiness of the thing. Again, I love this because it shows exactly what I try to tell you to remember. It's not short and stout, and that spout is just as tall and reaching as it could possibly be that all makes it a coffee pot. <laughs> she is so gorgeous. And if you look back in our collections and our halls, you can find where I got this and you can see the cream and sugar that came with it. All porcelain in excellent shape. Here's your minor side and coming around is your major side and that minor side is extra good just beautiful can't get over it love love this coffee pot how could you not it's hard for me to pick a favorite now i gotta show you something different that we've never talked about before and this was a gift from miss jessica <laughs> made in Germany, signed and lidded. I still don't know how they get that metal holder on that stoneware. I, I know this is probably stoneware. It's nice and heavy. Look at this beauty, okay? It's designed to use with one hand, if you can tell. And you're going to take your other hand on something like this and you're going to at least use two fingers and pour that. Now we're going to do a real pour in a second. Somebody requested it and I want to do it. This again, it's signed and made in Germany by Gesch. And it's designed this is a fine porcelain. Wow, that is a seriously heavy porcelain. Can I rave over the beautiful violet irises? And this is 
Dr. Merkel, Adler, incredible. Quality porcelain, hand painted, beautiful example. What's different? This is a carafe. <laughs> okay, to be proper and know your pieces. This is prepared on the stove in your kettle. It's put in the extra thick. I can't get over it. I almost, you know, thought it was stoneware for a second because I haven't looked at it in a while. Incredible double thick porcelain and this will stay hot until you're ready to serve. Now you could put whatever you want in that carafe. Could be even a hot toddy or a hot cider. What a doozy. Let's look at that a second and we'll get those close-ups done for you and we're gonna make a cup of tea. So everyone knows what I did. I took and made the hot water in the tea kettle that stays on the stove. Stays on the stove top like so many of you, right? Then I've taken my specialty mix that I love, Bigelow green tea and a Kiss Me organic dandelion tea and put the two tea bags in the teapot like this. And this is our Blue Danube set, as you know, if you watched the last video. And I like, now in a formal setting, you probably won't do this. You'll cut the bags off or you'll use a drop-in whole leaf ball and put it in there. Something a little more formal. When it's just us, I like these tags and strings out. They're gonna be forward because I'm gonna pour forward. The handle is facing the handing that I am, which is right-handed, okay? And I wanna show everybody the lid on a good proper pot. They have this catch. We all know, we should know why. That catch is for the high side. What's the high side? That's the handle side because we're gonna tip our pot. I'm going to take at least two fingers. It's really all you need. Two fingers. If you're more comfortable to be on each side of the pull. My objective here is to get a little bit of air in that tea as it's pouring. Okay, so I'm going to start out low and I'm going to pick it up a bit. And look at the color of this. Oh boy, just pretty. Now I've had two drops of lemon juice, real lemon juice in the cup already. I like to be totally set up. You don't need a crowded table. I don't use Kramer sugar in my tea. And in my coffee, it's only cream that comes out of the fridge and then it goes back. So. Unless there's a party or a big gathering, these things are not left on the table. I wish you could smell this now. <sighs> oh boy. And how magical. If you've never thought about it, take your two favorite teas, like my Earl Grey, <laughs> and something else you enjoy. How wonderful can it be? Guys, give us a like, a share, a comment. Get your tea on. <laughs> Set a beautiful four or five seat table and have your friends come over. Your mom, your sister, your brother, Try to boost your lifestyle and your fun with the simplest little things like having a tea together. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to go find those Scottish shortbread cookies if they're not all gone. Bye guys, take care, and we'll see you in the next amazing, over the top, awesome, incredible, collector and decorator video. Always a surprise around the corner. Always trying to give you something fun. See you soon.